Hello, Nuggets. So, uh, a little update on the pilot. Um, so, I made some changes to the pilot script, even though we were locked. We made some changes because we came up with some ideas that were really good. Um, minor changes, like added a scene that we felt we needed to give context and punch up, make it a bit funnier. So, the script is locked again, um, and this time I really think it is locked. Um, but what we're doing is we've been still wrestling with the idea of what do we do with this thing because being realistic right it's a good script let's say it's a let's say it's the greatest script ever written right doesn't matter if it's the greatest script ever written because no one's interested right first it's a half hour comedy single cam comedy comedy no one's going to give me showrunner job why would they they're not going to invest millions of dollars into a person they've met they're not going to give my wife showrunner job um so we can't we so here are the options for us we could potentially sell the script it's very difficult to do uh i have representation kind of and laura has representation we have contacts right contacts but it's 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 hard to do it's, it's really hard to sell a script you know um it's really about selling the pitch. You're selling yourself. And unfortunately, I'm not very good at that thing. Laura's very good at it, but I'm not. Um, so we could try and sell it. Anyway, things we could do with the script. We could try and sell it. Um, we could make a trailer for it, right? We could try and sell the idea through the trailer because it's hard to get people to write, read scripts. I think it's a very readable script. I think you pick it up and you want to finish it. But I don't know. That's it's my own writing, so who knows? It could be junk. In general... Someone just has to click on a link and watch a movie, you know, a, a two second, two minute trailer. They're much more likely to do that. But then that even if they did that and they watched it and they liked it, we're still back to that's just selling the script. And the problem with selling the script is that firstly, they'll probably kick me out. Right. And secondly, they'll probably kick Laura out. Right. Because they're going to say, well, we're going to invest money in this. So we want a big name star and we want a showrunner and proper writers. And you guys will get maybe some credit. I don't quite know how that side of it works. But I do know that the chances of us remaining involved in the in the slim chance that someone even wants to buy it is very small. So you know, you're just cutting down the market even. It's very slim chance someone's going to buy it. And then a very slim chance that we're going to be involved. And then very slim chance that we'll have any creative input. Like, it's it's difficult. The other way to do it is to make it. And I know I've we've gone backwards and forwards on this. That's why we're still wrestling over it. We're still wrestling over this. Is to make it ourselves. Because if we make the pilot ourselves and we do a decent job, then that is potentially something where people could say, we're going to buy exactly what you do, right? So just go do that again 12 times. It's still slim. This whole business is slim margins, right? The chance of actually doing it. But it's a better chance of saying, look, this is what we're about. Do you, do you like what we do? Here's what you can help us with. You can give us money to go do more of these and maybe to get a better camera <laughs> and to get a proper crew and to you know invest a little bit of money in, develop it, the idea further. Um, that is a possibility, and I think it's our most likely possibility. So we're kind of at that position now. We're thinking, okay, we're going to shoot this. So now there's a ton of decisions to be made, and it seems that at the very top of that is what quality do we want? You know, because we can shoot it on an iPhone, right? We can't shoot audio. We have to. We'll have to. We, we'd use like a little handheld, like a Tascam or a, a Zoom H4n or something. We'd use something to record the audio separately, and then edit it in Premiere. Um, but we could just use an iPhone. We did some test footage with the iPhone, and it's really good. You know, um, in certain shots, it's comparable to a Red or an Arri. <laughs> it really is. It really is. But certain shots, it's like this little narrow band of things that it does really well, you know. And then as soon as you throw a curveball at the iPhone, um, it can't handle it. Of course it can't. It's a f camera phone. It's this tiny mini sensor and, you know, you know, it hasn't got a lens. Well, you know, it doesn't have an adjustable lens. And obviously a proper camera is going to do better. Um, but in certain things, like the scene that we shot, which was just uh, Laura talking in a car, having a conversation in a car, it looked really good. It was, it was really impressive, actually, you know. And then you can do processing effects in Premiere, and I can do stuff with it. And, you know, if it's tightly edited, it will help. Um, 
But it looked pretty good. Hang on, I'm going to pause it. I'm going to close the door. You got to see my fat ass. Lucky you. All right. So um, it looked pretty good. Um, and we can edit it and tighten all of that stuff up. But everyone knows it's going to be an iPhone. You know, at some point during that show, they're going to go, this is a crappy camera. Or we're going to want to tell them it's an iPhone so they don't think these people don't know what they're doing. They'll be a bit impressed and say like, oh, it's with an iPhone. You know, they did pretty well for that. But it's very limited. It does give it that tone of guerrilla, kind of aggressive, kind of almost like Curb Your Enthusiasm. We were talking about that a lot, where the, the, the camera is a voyeur. It's there and it's active and it's present but it feels like it just caught them in the middle of the conversation. It just kind of rushed in. The iPhone does give us that, has that feeling about it, even though we have like a, oh look, I have it right here. I have like a little gimbal stabilizer, uh, which is pretty good, terrible software, but it's uh, pretty good. Um, it has that kind of energy to it and, it, and that could be a good selling point. But the truth is it doesn't look as good and it is, has got a ton of limitations. You can't zoom. And you can, but it's digital zoom, which looks so bad, so you can't zoom. Um, and just tracking and moving around with it, um, it's not, you know, it's not designed for the kind of functionality. Obviously, we can't switch lenses. We can't do anything interesting there. Um, there's problems with depth perce perception, focal, length, blah, 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 focal lengths and stuff like that. Um, so it's very, very limiting. But if we embrace that culture and said, that's what we're doing, that's the point, then there's a possibility. Also, people are interested in stuff that's made on iPhone. There are, there are you know, there are, uh, not awards, what's the word, uh, festivals and stuff like that um, that you can put in, you know. I mean, as a TV pilot, so I have no idea whether it fits into that mold. But the point is, if you make it on an iPhone, there are more, there is a group of interested people who are like, okay, that was made on a phone. I want to look at it. So there's that benefit. Or... We know a lot of people in the industry. Laura in particular knows a lot of people in the industry. We could potentially hire a DP and a camera, probably be on a Magic camera or Red or something. I doubt it would be an Arri, but maybe. Um, we could spend a little bit of money and invest in this and say, actually, let's shoot this. Let's do a proper shooting schedule. The problem is that feels like a bonehead move to me. And I, I don't know whether I'm over gun shy. I'm very, I'm very thrifty anyway. I'm, I'm cheap. I'm a cheap bastard. Um, and I worry about spending money. I don't know whether I should invest in myself that much, you know, because all you hear about is people slapping their heads going, God, the idiot invested all that money. He put 100,000, not that we would do 100,000, but he put 100,000 into his own thing. He has no idea how shitty he is. I don't want to be one of those people. But then equally, the people who are successful who do it on their own couldn't have had that thought. They must have just thought, I'm good enough. So I don't know. I know that Laura wants to hire, rent a camera. She wants to put some money into this. She wants to invest. She's like, fucking go for it. And maybe I just need to listen to her. The script is good. You know, she's great as the lead. We did that one scene and I was like, wow, this is, yeah, this is a match made in heaven. It works really well. But we've got to spend some money. I mean, even if we get a cheap crew, like Laura said, that she can get uh, the DP, a friend of ours, a friend of hers, and I think a camera assistant who could track the shots and stuff like that, which is a huge deal. By the way, I've tried doing it on my own short films. It's really hard. You need people there just to track the shots and to track the audio so that when it comes to editing, it's not chaos, you know. So you don't have to watch everything three times to find the good take, you know. Um, she could get him and an, an assistant camera um and i think that's it maybe one other person for like 600 bucks a day really cheap or well, 600 bucks she said it was by page so it depends on what your shooting schedule is either way cheap is the point so we might be able to shoot this for like five grand right um and five grand is my estimate she thinks it's more like two and a half grand but um i'm better at budgeting she, don't tell her that <laughs> but i am i've done a lot of budgeting in my time and I, I think I'm pretty good at it so I think it's going to be about five grand that's what we'd end up spending um, about two and a half thousand would be what we think we're going to spend and two and a half thousand would be the stuff that everyone forgets to track which counts <laughs> getting scripts mailed out getting props getting all of the craft services all of that so do I spend five grand 
and get a pretty decent little team together, a little crew together. They're still not paying the actors, by the way, because you couldn't afford that. Now we're up to 10 grand if we want to pay the actors, or actually more. But So it would still be not doing it non-union, I think, trying, trying to find either a SAG waiver or something. I'm not quite sure. I don't know the ins and outs. Laura's better at that stuff than I. But that's where we're at. I wanted to get it on camera so that I can look back on this and say, what decision did I make? Because I don't know what to do. We have a little bit of money, but I don't have a job or I don't have a regular job. And Laura doesn't have a regular job. So that money is what we live on. We take five grand out of that. That's, uh, that's a month and a half mortgage. Jesus, my mortgage is big. But either way, it's six weeks of mortgage. You know, It's a month of living, five grand. It's about, about a month of living. All of our bills and stuff. That's my nut, as my stepfather says. My nut is five grand. So, yeah, I don't know what to do. I think we're going to shoot it. I think we're going to shoot it. I get so embarrassed, though. I'm so embarrassed that I'm going to be in front of a group of professionals looking like an idiot. I feel so much shame. I feel guilt all the time. It's what's held me back my whole life, to be honest with you. Because I'm a good writer. I know I'm a good writer. I am good. <laughs> it's a good script. But put me in front of a group of people, I don't like looking like an idiot. I don't walk into fights I can't win, you know. But sometimes the only way you know how good of a fighter you are is by getting your ass kicked. So it's all analogies coming out all over the place here. But, yeah. I think we're going to have to shoot it. I'm going to have to learn this skill. It's hard to learn the skill when you're nearly 50. You kind of set, I'm setting my ways, you know. But I have my wife and she wants to push us forward. And she's awesome like that. So, I don't know. Hopefully the next video will be my me talking to you about the budget. Or me talking about the storyboard because I think I need to storyboard it. If we're gonna if we're gonna go to a professional group of people, if we're gonna walk up to a director of photography, we can't just hand him a script and just go, I don't know, what do we do? We need to look like we know and I do know what to do. Here's the thing, I do know what to do. It's on set. In the moment, I don't know if that information is readily accessible. But I know that I want to storyboard this. I want to get some ideas so we have a decent shot list because I've screwed that up before where the shot list wasn't clear. Um, I know that we need to have proper lighting because the lighting is a nightmare. I know that we need audio. Audio is a nightmare if you don't do it properly. So I need a sound recorder. I mean, all of this, I think we're going to spend at least five grand. And that's dirt budget cheap. That's asking for a lot of favors, you know. People will be eating a lot of sandwiches on the set. That's what I'm saying. Subway will like me. We will frequent Subway often if we shoot this. All right, hopefully next update, I'll actually have a decision. All right, little nuggets. Whatever it is you want to do, do it. I wish I could practice what I preach. Bye.